Hey fellow babies, welcome back to Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. Um, we are hopeful you're watching this real time as a Patreon patron. If you are, thank you very much. Um, another way to do this is to be a YouTube subscriber. And again, thank you very much if you're doing that. Uh, you'll also get, a, get it fast if you are linked with your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account. That costs nothing. Um, it's really easy to do. The instructions on how to do it are right below my face. So if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you can stick it to Amazon. They will actually pay Shane if you link your account. Stick it to them, it's free. This episode of Pactor Factor is brought to you by DeShazer Ryan Realty. Right now, Doug DeShazer has beautiful lots available adjacent to Kukanusa Lake in Northwest Montana. Pull up your RV and access the hookups or build your own construction. Either way, you have access to world-class fishing, hunting, boating, swimming, biking, hiking, and the internet. No matter where you're looking to buy, make Doug DeShazer your real estate consultant at 406-291 one six four three. That's Doug DeShazer at four zero six two nine one one six four three. From sifted from Pitor, with the excessive cost of developing Sony first party games like Insomniac Spider Man Two, does it make business sense for studios to lower their standards a notch or two? That's a great question. Um, this would reduce the time and cost of producing a game, but won't lowering quality also lower sales. It seems like you'd lose far more money in lost sales when you save in development costs. What do you think? Is PlayStation in a lose-lose position? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I guess the, the truth is that the studios who get entrusted with big budgets, um, they tend not to be wasteful. You know they're not you know they're not like flying around in private jets and pooping on on gold-plated toilets and eating caviar for lunch um, the the vast majority of the expense in game development is personnel and the the games that cost the most are the ones that take the longest to to develop so I would submit and I, I'm sure there was some leak from you know the insomniac leak that Spider-Man's not even close to, you know, the most expensive game ever. I mean, I'm sure Grand Theft Auto costs five times as much. Um, and the question of whether it's worth it or not, uh, you know, there are ways to save money, but, but you know, Ted Price and Insomniac get entrusted with the Spider-Man brand because they make high quality, great games and their games are consistently, you know, 80 or above kind of game review scores. Um, Sony, does not want to tarnish its own reputation with a with a triple a exclusive title uh, marvel absolutely does want to tarnish its brand by having a sub substandard game made so you know you'll see it every once in a while there'll be like a star wars game or something that's not particularly well reviewed and everybody will go oh my god is you know is ea gonna lose a star wars license or a dc game i think they made a catwoman game or something oh my god is warner brothers gonna pull all its content which in fact they did um so licensed content in particular is really hard to cut costs on um there is the cost of the license obviously but there's also a commitment by the studio that they're going to do a, a, a AAA job. Um, where we get kind of a lose-lose result is when you get a game like Skull and Bones that takes, I wish I knew how many years, and they announced it in 2016, so I assume it was started then. So it took eight years to make, you know, so let's just say $150 million to make and it got a 60 Metacritic. That's like horrible. I mean, bad score. It's a bad game, and it costs three times what it should have cost. Um, and that happened because I think they changed direction three or four times, you know, while making the game. So the hard part of game development is coming up with a plan and being right, and then your game development roadmap is correct, and you did everything right, and you got to where you wanted to be. You know, in the time allotted, you, you hit the budget and you did what you're supposed to do. Um, I will say, for example, Grand Theft Auto uh, 6, um, I think that that happened. You know, the game's not out yet. I don't think they've diverted from their roadmap. I just think they had a 10 year or 12 year roadmap, you know, and I think they're doing exactly what they plan to do. And when you sell, you know, 150 million copies of a game, it's a $3 billion, $5 billion franchise, $10 billion franchise, 
then fine, who cares? You know, so it takes 12 years and it, it they cost you $500 million. They're gonna make 3 billion, who cares? So, you know, I don't think any real rational human being thought GTA 6 was coming in five years. It just wasn't going to. So, you know, I think Spider-Man, no, I think Spider-Man probably uh, costs what it costs because Insomniac's really good. Um, they pay their people plenty and their people are in relatively high cost Southern California. And, you know, they didn't take a really long time to make the game. Um, it probably is perfectly on budget and what an amazing seller. Um, so again, the games that are successful, like Larian Games, I mean, they're not a cheap outfit. You know, their game was unbelievable, you know, but it took them how many years? Eight years, something like that, seven, eight years. So I, I think the right way to think about a game is a normal size studio is 20 million a year. You know, so multiply 20 million times the number of years it takes for the game to come out. So the average game is 60 to 80 million and a crazy expensive game is 150. Um, and that happens occasionally. You can't afford it with Skull and Bones. It just doesn't make sense. Like, I know game developers, they're not, look, nobody's starving in the game development world, but 100 to 125 is kind of the average. And remember, that includes like the studio head who's making 500 grand or something, and the art guy who's making 40, you know, so so the game tester is making 30, you know. So, so when you kind of average out all those 400 people, 100 to 125, even at 125, thousand per person 400 people 50 million bucks a year you can't get to 250 unless it's five years so i don't know you know i i realize this is leaked stuff i know somebody wrote that number down i have a hunch that number includes the marketing budget and i think that that i think they're probably counting marketing which has nothing to do with development and the marketing budget tends to be it depends on the game but 15 percent of expected sales so if you think Spider-Man, just nice easy numbers, is gonna sell 10 million copies at 60, let's call it 50 bucks wholesale. If you think it's gonna do 500 million of sales, then there's a $75 million component in there for marketing. If you think it's gonna do a billion of sales, then there's 150 million mar uh, marketing component. So I have a feeling that 250 got blown up. And, and the problem with the gaming press is that very few of them actually studied business or have MBAs and it obviously makes sense that they don't because they studied English or journalism and they write. But they don't really know how to parse this stuff. There's no way this thing had 250 million development costs. It just it can't be. Like they haven't, when did Spider-Man 1 come out? Like three, four, 2019. Yeah. So this it, it couldn't have been more than five years. I mean, it just couldn't have been. Um, so again, it's really hard to get to those kind of numbers. But like I said, I think it's worth it if the game sells like Spider-Man 1 did. I mean, it sold 12 million copies on PlayStation only. That's great. You know, Sony is paying up for that. You know, Sony owns the studio, but Sony is paying up to Marvel for that exclusive. The exclusive includes all the payments to Marvel. Marvel gets 15% of sales, you know? So let's just say 75 million to Marvel, 75 million to marketing, there's 150 of it. You know, so again, it's not a $100 million game either. You know, I think the game's probably 120 to 150, but no. Um, so actually the answer to your question is it doesn't make business sense to lower standards. What it makes business sense to do is be efficient. And so I think the most exciting part of artificial intelligence being used in the game business is that it will make studios more efficient. I think you're gonna start to see um, art get better at lower cost. You know, and it, AI doesn't work unless you have good inputs, but I think you're gonna see story get better at lower cost. And again, good inputs, good writers, good artists who are directing the AI and making sure that it's doing what they're, the output that they're looking for. Uh, but you're gonna save money. Anyway, uh, is PlayStation a lose-lose? Um, I think they're, they're stuck to it with an outdated business model. You know, if you think about Game Pass as being available on any screen, and within 10 years it will be, then you literally have one and a half billion potential customers for Game Pass. And Sony's got, you know, a couple hundred million potential customers for PlayStation. So Microsoft's gonna have a five or six or seven times a uh, bigger addressable market and ultimately I think it's going to be just like cell phones that everybody's going to have one everybody's going to have a game pass subscription you are paying for your Amazon Prime subscription so link it to your Twitch Prime subscription stick it to Amazon 
If you just follow the steps below and link, they pay Shane. It costs you nothing. You don't get a bill. It's all part of your subscription. Take advantage of that or you are a dope. So you're either lazy or stupid. Which would you prefer to be? Lazy or stupid, okay? Don't be lazy, don't be stupid. Link your Twitch Prime account to your Amazon Prime account, please. So Shane can afford to keep paying for gas and coming out here and seeing me and talking to my wife and petting my dog and being a good dude. Okay, that was it for today's Factor Factor. We will see you next time.